So hi and welcome to ni the Night Hacking live stream. We are still at the Java Lands conference and we have a new guest. Hi, Rabia. Hi. So what do you want to talk about? Uh, I'm going to talk about how you can uh, refactor your existing code to make uh, use of Java 9 modules. And uh, you know this great little example, like you have a big monolithic big applica monolith, yeah. application like which somehow looks like this, like uh, in this example, I grabbed some slides from uh, Carola from her talk, like uh, 327 classes, which all depend okay. on each other. Uh, this is what happens in usually in big monolithic applications. You start with a nice greenfield application and yeah. have your architecture, but you can't really define your architecture in the code. And mm. so it's only in some kind of documentation. And at some point, then uh, the module starts calling some usual classes in the UI yeah. as well, not only the UI, the model, and then you have just a big chaos, the big ball of mud, and right. you, know, you don't really want to change anything because you will get your hands dirty. If you change something on one location, then it's, uh, you're going to have errors on the other location. And so what you probably want to do is um, changing your monolithic application to uh, a smaller monolithic application. I wouldn't call it microservices. <laughs> the big piece of rock into the smaller pieces of rock. Yes, uh, <laughs> create smaller pieces of rock. I wouldn't, wouldn't really rewrite everything into mm. modules in one go because, I mean, you really want to benefit from modules and the only thing you can benefit from modules is when you really have a use case. And I have a little example for that, what uh -huh. could be a perfect use case to actually rewrite something to use modules. Um, yeah, the, the uh, advantage you have with modules is that you have uh, some clear boundaries. Um, that's uh, how your architecture should look like. Like mm -hmm. you have a, a customer service. The customer service is called by the invoice service. It's also called by the picture service. But the customer service is not going to call back into the invoice service. And uh, this um, these are example modules mm -hmm. and uh, where you can really define these boundaries now. So I have a little example application at the vet. Okay. Uh, because I think it's a domain which is kind of easy to understand for everybody. And uh, this is my little example application. This is my first JavaFX application I've ever written. So oh, cool. <laughs> uh, as an example, I think it's it's uh, best to demonstrate something when you have a UI and actually see something. Yeah, the people can see examples. Yeah. So um, I have customers. I have uh, pets. And uh, they also have invoices for the, visit, uh, for uh -huh. the visits of the pets. And so... I showed this application to a friend of mine. Uh, this is a friend of mine. He's called Al. He has a car repair shop. <laughs> and he says, well, I could use an application like that as well. I mean, what I'm doing is very similar. I don't have pets, but I have uh, cars. Cars. So what if we just change the waiting room to work items? And then we can change the pets to cars. And we change uh, the table columns and to brand and last repair and then I have my own application. <laughs> I mean, this is what customers do, right? Yeah. And if you're German, then a pet and a car is basically yeah, the same thing, right? Yeah, it's basically the same. So for them, it's very easy to do. But yeah. what <laughs> we probably don't want to have is like we have our entities, customer, pet, uh, visit and invoice. What we probably don't want to have is storing cars in the pet entity. I right. mean, as developers, it's a problem for the customer. Clearly, it's not a problem at all. And so what we want to do is if this would be our exemplary um, modules, customer, pet, visit, and invoice. Uh, right now, it's uh, only packages. We want to uh, replace the pet with a car. Right. So we have a new entity for car. And um, so I'm having some examples. I can actually split up your existing code mm -hmm. into modules. And what you can use is some uh, systems which can analyze your source code. Mm -hmm. And what you want to actually find is um, parts of your code which don't have any cyclic dependencies yeah. to each so other. So you want to see the dependencies yes. on the code. Yeah. For this example, I uh, used a, a small tool called uh, dgraph, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, written by Jens Schauder very recently, which can analyze your source code and yeah. show you some cyclic dependencies. And in this case, uh, I made it uh, to use parts of the um, uh, package structure. So mm -hmm. I made it, split it up into um, the uh, technical structure of the application. So what we see, the red arrows are bad arrows because okay. uh, those are cyclic dependencies. And but we still have some which uh, have the black arrows, like uh, the DB is uh, calling the model. That's okay. UI is calling the model. UI is also calling the database. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have some parts which we can actually split up into modules. And we found them right in our source code without really thinking about it, just uh, running a tool mm -hmm. and, and actually seeing what happens. 
And so we can uh, do some uh, refactoring and actually split out these parts and make modules of them. So, and if we want to define a module, uh, we just uh, create a new project and uh, we add a model description to it and uh, we name it our new model, we name it model. <laughs> and uh, it exports uh, one of the packages, the d database package. Mm -hmm. We don't want to export the usual package. Okay. And then we have our new UI module, according to the structure. And uh, this has a name, UI. It requires our model. And it exports uh, another table package. And we have classes in there, and uh, those classes now can't call the util, any classes of the util mm -hmm. package anymore, even if they are public. I mean, that's the advantage right. we now have with the modules. And um, but everything else it can call. So that's uh, how we can actually split up everything into modules. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what I do in my example. So they are they are online. Uh, you can actually download them and uh, test it out oh uh, how it works. And uh, this is how I created some new models now. So I moved everything uh, which is uh, part of the entities I don't want to replace. I moved them into one new model. Mm -hmm. um, I could actually split them up into several modules, but I don't need to. I right. only want right. to replace the pet part with the car, so I don't want to replace the other parts. So I moved the uh, customer visit and invoice, which are still the same, and then the new application, I moved them to one model, module, and a UI module, and a pet module, mm -hmm. and then I have uh, another module for the vet application itself, where we have the main source mm -hmm. code for the application, so it uh, uses all the other mod uh, modules. And um, then I have a problem there because uh, actually in, in the view uh, of the customer, which we've uh, seen previously, I actually show the different pets of the customer. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing I can't do anymore, right? And I actually had a cycle in there, okay. which we couldn't see before. And uh, so the customer view creates uh, the pet table and also calls the, the um, data access object. And then, and then by doing so, you see all the tiny little mistakes you've done yes, or the way yes, you've yes, built around. Yes. Okay. Yeah, While that's really good. It, right? mm -hmm. But what you usually do is you just split it up in modules, and there might mm -hmm. be uh, some parts which just don't compile anymore, and then you can actually think about it. And to uh, resolve this problem, um, which is uh, here I actually have the source code, like uh, um, create tab pane, it creates a new tab for the pets mm -hmm. here. And um, this is the code, right? We can't call the day one anymore, and uh, the pet table and the pet view, we can't call that anymore mm -hmm. because it's not accessible from our UI anymore right. because we split out the whole pet part to a new, new module. What I can do now is uh, use a service loader instead. So I create a new interface uh, called uh, tab service, mm -hmm. which has a method create tabs, and uh, this will create all the tabs in my customer view for me. And uh, then uh, I have the standard component. Uh, it's already been there since uh, Java 6, but I think not many people did actually use, use it. Use it now. Yes. Uh, as but far now, as we I know. <laughs> now we can uh, define services in our modules as well. So uh, we can say users are a customer view tab service. And um, then on the other hand, in our pet module, we can say, okay, let's implement the service. So we create a new class, pet mm -hmm. tab service. Uh, and we implement the method create hubs and we use the source code we had before, right? We just copy it over into our, to a, into our new class, uh, which was previously in the customer view directly. We copy it over and uh, then we can create our pet table again mm -hmm. because now we have access to it again. And in our module definition, we can just say um, we provide in, um, this customer view tab service with our implementation pet customer view tab service. And uh, then the runtime will know about it. So mm -hmm. it says, OK, there's somebody providing a service to it. And on the other side, when we ask for the service uh, through the service loader, so we say uh, service loader dot, I don't know how the method is called, probably load. Load, um, I guess, yeah. yeah. We say service loader load with our uh, customer view tab service dot mm -hmm. class. And uh, then we get back an iterator or something. So we just create a yeah. stream for it. And uh, then we can call our create tabs method instead. And this is uh, how we actually can resolve the dependencies. Mm -hmm. And then we have a full application again. And what I did then was uh, resolving some, some additional dependencies there. And this actually ended up in uh, two applications. One is uh, still for the vet. We have uh, our pets here. And then we have our cars here. Mm -hmm. So it's now uh, two applications which uh, use the same source code. But uh, the different parts are just uh, split out into modules, which, which, you, can sense, yeah. which you can uh, see here in a, in a visual representation. 
So we have a new module here, which I created uh, at the, as the last step, mm -hmm. a new application module, which contains our main class. And it also uses a service now. So mm -hmm. in the service, I have uh, methods for uh, getting the title, getting the image for the application, okay. getting the style sheet. And uh, then I have implementations for that mm -hmm. in our uh, application classes, so in our car application, our vet application. Applications, yeah. And uh, those are using uh, either the pet and, uh, or the car module. And they all use the UI in the model. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. So we have um, some uh, very simple steps here, some refactoring steps. What you should watch out for is that you should have some uh, package structure, which mm -hmm. you should always follow. Um, so you have your business layer and your technical layers also in packages. Then it's mm -hmm. very uh, much easier to actually do the analysis and to actually split out the mm -hmm. things. And so you analyze the dependencies, and you can I identify the modules and create the modules, then you move the code over to the new modules and resolve the dependencies with services and then you can go back to step number one. So basically an iterative Yeah, it's an iterative process and uh -huh. like I said before, like I would only create some modules out of my existing source code if I really need it. So in this case I needed to replace the pet with the car because mm. there was a customer which had this requirement. Uh, this is also what we actually do in uh, our application as well which now has like 283 modules. Mm -hmm. We're wow. using OSGI, so it's oh okay. OSGI bundles, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it's 283 now, and it started with a monolithic application. Mm -hmm. And we have more and more requirements. Nowadays, we are adding new bundles as well. We are not only splitting out the old ones. Yeah. And uh, so this is um, how we're doing it for years now. And so what I think is also very um, uh, interesting about uh, Java 9 is that we have the Java linker now. Mm -hmm. And with the Java linker, we can create our own little application and we can right. just deploy it and it actually includes uh, the JRE as well and only the modules which we actually need. Only that, all what yes. you need. That's, that's so yeah, really good. With my good application, thing. it's uh, like uh, 45 megabytes. It's still fairly big, but I think they're going to improve I mean the Java linker. I mean, compared to both the JDK and your application before, that's... Uh, yeah, th that's probably a lot smaller. And it also creates a launcher for me. So if I'm on Windows and uh, I ca mm. can uh, name the launcher like that, and it will create a batch oh yeah, for th me th so that's I can handy. directly launch that's it. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, sounds like a really interesting approach. Um, you said it's open source, that people can have a look yes, at it. Yeah, Could sure. you just uh, quickly share the links? Uh, yeah. There you go. There it is. So you can uh, just download the source code. Yeah. So it's uh, five uh, different uh, applications, so mm -hmm. five different steps. So I had four refactoring steps. Uh, the slides are only available in German right now, but uh, <laughs> I think you can still follow it if, even <laughs> if you're speaking English. And uh, yeah, Please just uh, the download pictures. the source code <laughs> and to try it out. So I use it with Eclipse, for example. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of um, not ready right now, but it can do some b basic resolution of uh, modules. Um, for me, it's just easier to work with an Eclipse, so if I always use it. But for example, IntelliJ already released uh, their 2017.1, and they already yeah. support uh, Java 9 in there. And NetBeans has a nightly build. So mm -hmm. It's very easy to try it out right now. I would really recommend it to people to actually try it out exactly. and before your customer does it for you. Exactly. And also right now, <laughs> since Java 9 is not there yet, but yes, to, uh, to get an idea how it's used. Yeah, and it's a really good example to, to yeah. get a feeling for it. And also yes. that you have an example application, so you really see code and yeah. how to do this in a smaller scale. And yeah. So, so, I mean, there's a lot of more things. Like, I'm, for example, I'm not using any external dependencies. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I'm probably going to add it to the example as well, you so that you have an external dependency mm -hmm. and you can uh, see how it works then with automatic modules and stuff. Yeah, probably going to yeah, add really that good. as well. Yeah. yeah, thanks a lot for sharing this. Yeah. Are there any uh, last words you want to share with the live <laughs> audience, maybe who don't uh, attend <laughs> Java Land? <laughs> Any last words? <laughs> <laughs> Any famous last words? <laughs> well, we already had the roller coasters yesterday, right? <laughs> exactly. That's the good thing about Java Land, so we already <laughs> survived those. Yes, so we survived that. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's a great conference to attend, uh, especially if we have, uh, usually uh, we have great weather. Today is a bit gray, but um, I mean, being in a theme park is always a nice yeah. experience. It is. And uh, from the community aspect, it's uh, always great here. So you can't see it on camera, but we have a <laughs> huge community space where people can sit and, and chat and talk right. to each other. And that's right. what I really like about the conference. Yeah, I can second that. So yeah, so thanks a lot for sharing yeah. this and thanks for the live for audience. Thanks for watching.